Good morning, Saints. This is uh, Elder Harvey here at the Church at Henrico. We're located here on Brook Road, uh, 5934 Brook Road, uh, Richmond, Virginia, 23227. We're here again at, at the building. Uh, there's no one here but, but me. Uh, we've been here for, since last March, I believe, and it's uh, been a year since we have actually had a congregational setting and we and we came together as a body in a visible way. But we've been meeting over the course, conference call with Elder Myers and his wife uh, sharing in the ministry there of the uh, conference call. And there is a number, if you want that number, you call 804-714-5530. And I will get you the code to get on that conference call. It has uh, been terrific for me and my wife, and I'm sure others can speak as well, that Elder Myers and uh, his wife, um, she reads and has done a masterful job at sharing uh, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and those things that he desires the church to do on the foundation. I think he's he's been... Uh, concerned with the management of your daily activities, your money, your time, um, your kindness, your mercy, all that. He has been working with uh, those particulars over a period of time, and I advise you to tune in to hear him uh, share with you those things that Christ has placed on his heart to share with the body of Christ at large and with the church in one locality. Uh, before we go any further, let us have a word of prayer. Father, uh, we thank you and we praise you this morning for your mercy, for your kindness. And we thank you for you what you're about to do uh, here this morning in this building and through this vessel of clay. I am a vessel of clay, Jesus. I'm just a pot. Uh, I've been shaped and molded by your uh, magnificent hand. And hopefully in, in, in the time when time comes we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we'll see what adequate reward for the things done in this vessel of clay. We thank you again. Forgive us of our sins and trespasses and cleanse our heart and our minds right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you we praise you. In Jesus name Amen. We're going to I know last week <clears throat> we did promise um I, I made the promise uh, um, that we were going to go into the book of Ephesians and look at obedience, which we are going to go into the book of Ephesians. But we were going to deal with the submitting of wives and husbands. Well, the Lord haven't really moved on me to go there this week perhaps next week I don't know I, I pray that I'm being under the, the guides of the spirit and pray that uh, God will continue to lead and guide me he made a promise there in the book of uh, John said when the Holy Spirit will come <clears throat> he will lead you and guide you into all truth I thank him for that promise and I thank him for my ability to listen to the Spirit. Uh, many uh, uh, poor preachers and teachers and mothers and dads and sisters and brothers and kids uh, fail to listen to the Spirit because there are so many other things that are, they are listening to. And sometimes he is pushed aside because we have other interests and other things. But we're going to deal uh, back again with this uh, submission. Um, I want to, I think the Spirit has helped, uh, want me to go to this area of the scriptures. The church is, itself is, is on the, is the foundation that the apostles laid. But the true foundation is the person of Jesus Christ. I know in uh, Galatians, 
what is the church? Because the church is on a, a foundation, and each individual that belongs that is on the foundation should be uh, their lively stones, and it should be erecting a, a church that can be put on display, not only in, uh, in the locality, but universal also. I, I want to say this to all my brothers and sisters that are in Christ. I don't belong to a denomination. I, I don't hate denomination. I don't, I don't even dislike denomination. But denominations tend to lock you in and imprison you into a certain ideologies where you can't really function as you, sh as you should. I think I did a message uh, maybe a month ago on uh, coming out of bondage. That's on this site also. If you want to get a chance to look at it, it may be helpful. But I'm loyal to Christ. Loyal to Christ. I, uh, I'm loyal to him and to the church at large uh, that believes that Jesus died for our sins and rose again on the third day and is now seated at God's right hand. So make sure that when we are given this message this morning, you're not in, in bondage to anybody. You're not in bondage to a, a, a thought or a process or a traditional concept or you of something of that nature. Because if you do, you really can't submit to Christ. You can't submit to him because you're submitting to something other than Christ. There's only one person that you should be submitting to and that's Christ. I have a passage of scripture in the book of Galatians which talks of the church. We haven't left submitting. Don't, don't get me wrong here. But I want to lay this further on the foundation so that when I do go to the book of Ephesians uh, chapter uh, 5 and begin to speak on wives and husbands roles we'll have something uh, of to work with we have something to relate to we have something to look at to help us clarify why uh, Christ has asked those particular um, commands of the husband and the wife but in Gal on Galatians chapter chapter 3 if you have your your Bible, will you turn there with me, please? And we're going to go to at least three or four passages of Scripture this morning. But these Scriptures will be also located on the uh, in the message that uh, when you go on it, you can pull it up and you, you'll see the, the Scriptures. Uh, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verses 26, 27, 28, and 29, For we are all are the sons of God by faith in Jesus Christ. We're all sons of God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. We're baptized into Christ, and Christ is that firm foundation that we have been baptized into. Now we need to express him in all his glory from that foundation. Uh, there is neither Jew you lose all your Jewishness nor Greek you use all your Gentileness for as many of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ put on Christ but how much of Christ you have put on <clears throat> is another story the submission part is how you put on Christ you have to take disrobe something of the world and the world system and put on more and more of Jesus Christ and it says that uh, that is the church the church is the ones that have been called out of the world into Christ on the foundation of his death his burial and his resurrection I want to make that clear because if you if you if, if you're in a, a local assembly a building 
or you have a pastor or whatever. Uh, I'm not criticizing any of this, but I want you to see that if you're in a place of that nature and the foundation of your faith is not in Christ, then where is it? Where is it? And if your foundation is in Christ, uh, you want to submit to him so that you can build on the foundation those things that are Christ worthy. Uh, also, there's another passage of scripture in the book of uh, of, Eph of Ephesians chapter 2 I believe it's verse verse 8 or 9 where Paul speaks about the church putting on display and God when the church is finally in its proper spear after the judgment of seat and Christ is the church is put on display it speaks of it here in the book of Ephesians chapter uh, 2 verse 7 we're not going into all of that right now but we did want to see that God is proud and the church is of, 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 of tremendous value to God that Christ purchased at Calvary through his own blood the church is so valuable God's going to put it on display in eternity and future. Look here. And that the age to come, he may show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through, through Jesus Christ. In the age to come, eons, the age is out there somewhere, uh, he wants to put us on display of the grace of God that was in Christ Jesus. And that's why it's so important for, for submission to, to occur in the believer's life. It's an ongoing process. You just don't submit one time when you, su you submit to the work of the cross and you're born again and placed into the body of Christ. Now you're part of the uni universal church, the, the, back, the past, right now, and the future. You're a past, of, you're in a uh, a part of the universal church that belonged to God Almighty through Christ Jesus. Now, I, I want to say this, that if you are, uh, have not received Christ as your personal Savior, you're still outside of the realm of salvation. You can't be saved in this generation, in this disposition, unless you have been born again and worked out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Just because, I, and that's why I said earlier, I don't belong to any particular place. I come here to the building, but this is not the build. The building is not the church. The church meets in the building. This is where we meet on a local or level whenever we meet. But now we're meeting in our homes over the conference call and also on the on YouTube where we are speaking this morning so don't get me wrong here I don't have anything personal against any, anybody but I'm saying I have to be loyal to the one who has embraced me and I'm on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ I can't preach anything but Jesus I can't support anything that actually it doesn't belong to God I can't give credence to anything that the spirit has not enabled me to see uh, that is a part of Christ that's what I'm saying here uh, am I uh, happy with that yes it took uh, some time to get to this place in my personal journey with Christ but it took a lot of submission and a lot of obeying to leave out of the the this, the uh, the culture of the church, the church has a culture, and you have to submit to Christ in order for Him to bring you out of those particular traditions, rudiments, philosophy that is taught by those from the pulpit uh, who have 
no concern for your soul, no concern for your, your, your eternal destiny. All they want to do is get you to, to, uh, to be obedient to the, that one who is in charge. Now, on submitting, you have to really realize that submitting is a good thing. Is a good thing if you submit into the proper person. The reason I'm, I'm kind of uh, alluding that part, and I promised last week about the foundation of the uh, submitting to the wives, submit to your husband, and also husband love your wives as Christ loved the church uh, and gave himself for it. Now, you have to be on the foundation to really appreciate anything that's that is said from this poor preacher this morning. You really need to be on the foundation before you can actually see your role in submitting to God that he might express himself uh, in a real way uh, to the world uh, at large. Because right now, uh, the world is confused about the church. They, I'm thinking they don't know what the, what the church is because the church is... Uh, uh, expressing uh, that which actually if you do a real scripture study and scripture reading and a real um, tend to those, those scriptures you'll see that um, uh, it, is, it is a foreign element that is working in the indivisible church that is not Christ now that's part of, of submission so that Christ can put it on display, not only here, but in eternity future, where God will put it on display. That is my that is my son's church. That is my son's bride. And does she look does she look beautiful? It's because the, the bride did submit to Christ and all that it could put on the church could put on the display not only of Christ but his love for the church and love for everyone who is a member of the body of Christ. Now, the purpose uh, sometimes is is kind of eludes many of us. Uh, it eluded me for a while because I was a pastor for many years in a local uh, a denomination. But I, I saw in submitting, I saw more of Christ and less of that denominational teaching, and less of the denominational uh, tradition. You, 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 you get what I'm saying here. When you see Christ, you 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 see the the person of Jesus Christ, the love of Christ, the mercy of Christ, the compassion of Christ, the kindness of Christ. Uh, you see all that, but in some settings, you don't necessarily see that. You see a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding, a lot of distrust, a lot of uh, confusion in those settings. But once you come to Christ, the confusion tends to uh, evaporate when you see more and more of the person of Christ. And I say that because Jesus said, "I came into my own. I came into my own. My own received me not." But as to many of them did, did receive them to me, I, I, I became they, they become the sons of God. That's that's in John chapter chapter one. If you want to take a look at that, the um, further submitting on the foundation is the topic we're speaking from today. I, we say you submit it. Well, the flesh, you, you your flesh needs to be dealt with. Because the flesh is a hard, the flesh has a hard head. I spoke last week on the discipline. And our discipline, proper discipline, was soften the head if the seed of instructions are dealt with. Now, in the book of, of Romans, <clears throat> chapter 6, Paul is speaking to the church and this is about how Christ works in the believer's life 
to get him to a place or to inform him of the necessity to submit. Because without, without the submitting, the spirit has no avenue or no ability to, to do anything unless the believer himself submits to the spirit working. And I'm saying that because God made you a free moral agent. And if you're a free moral agent, God will not it, uh, will not stop you from doing certain things if you want to do them. You can kill, you can murder, you can lie, you can cheat, you can commit adultery, fornication, incest, um, all those horrible things that are going on now in the families of the wicked one. We pray that they're not going on in, in the members of the family of Almighty God. Because God has redeemed you from the curse. He's given you the Lord Jesus Christ so you may live a life above that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul going to present this to the Roman believers that church at Rome. Now remember, people are people. And nine times out of ten, these individuals are doing some of the same things that perhaps the world has done or something you've done. So Paul is instructing them here in order to escape that, let's take a good look at what Christ has done with the believer uh, through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Uh, verse 6, chapter 6 of uh, the book of Romans, please. Um, these, these will be in the notes on the, on the um, website. What shall you say then? Shall we continue that grace may abound? Shall we continue in sin once we get saved so that grace will abound? Paul said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? Paul said, we're dead, but I still want to do some things. We're dead, and I still do do some things. We're dead. So what is he talking about here? Know ye that, that as many as us that were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. This is a spiritual awakening here. This is a spiritual revelation. And if you're on the, on the, if you're on the foundation, this is a fundamental that you need to know this so that you can submit to Christ on the foundation that he can get his work done through every member of the body of Christ. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Now, he's not talking about water baptism, my friend. Water baptism will not save you. I was baptized back in, oh, so many years ago, I can't remember. My brother and I were baptized at the same time. And uh, that's all we got was baptized. Uh, with water and uh, my whole life previously I mean post baptism was uh, a life of uh, recklessness a life of uh, sin a life of doing what I want to do so I'm, I'm I can say that water baptism doesn't save you it's only a admission that You've been baptized into the body of Christ. It's a symbolic of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But my, but not me. But, I'm sorry. Without me knowing that, it meant nothing to me. It only meant I got wet, and I had to go home and change my clothes, and put some dry clothes on because these were were wet. But it did nothing for the inner man here. And the reason I'm going here this morning is because you need to be baptized. You need to know if you've been born again that you've been baptized into the into the Lord Jesus Christ. You become, you, you put on him. Why? Through the new birth. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. I'm sure Nicodemus had been all these ceremonial washing they had 
uh, in the temple that he'd been through all those washing and, and uh, cleaning and sacrificial lambs and all that. But no, it, that, that, that's not the key here. The key is that you need to be born again. And you're born again when you're placed into the body of Christ or the moment you trust Christ as your personal Savior. I said all that to say this. For further uh, submission, you need more information. You need, you need more clarity on the fact that you're on the foundation now. You've been born again. If you have not been born again, my my brother or my friend, you, you're not even on the foundation. You may be in a, in a building and you may have a pastor there or, or whatever, but if you have been born again, you, you really don't have, you really don't have anything. All you got is tradition, all you got is uh, meetings and coming together and maybe even singing in the choir. You may be even a, a choir leader. But if you have not been born again, my brother, my brother and sister, and I'm not afraid to say that because I've been born again myself. I've been born again. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I am a child of Almighty God. I don't brag about this. I'm making a statement. I don't need to brag about it. I'm making a statement. But if you have not been born again, there's no way in the world you can be submissive. And if you have been born again without certain knowledge of what Christ has accomplished, their own Calvary cross, you can't be submissive either. Look what Paul says here. Verse 4. Therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death that as Christ was raised from the dead of, by the glory of the Father, even we also should walk in the newness of life. He's talking about walking in the spirit here. He's not talking about uh, getting a baptismal paper or a sign or something that helps you walk or you come to uh, the church and give your pastor your right hand and you still got your fist cl clenched in the back because you still hate people and things of that nature. No, he ain't talking about that. He said, you better be born again and put into the body of Christ by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, of course, Paul speaks about that in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Uh, if you get a chance to read it, I think it's chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through around uh, about 6, of uh, the how the soul salvation is worked on, how Christ baptized you into the body. Moment you trust Christ as your personal Savior, moment you, you trust Christ as dying for your sins, and on the third day God raised him from the dead, you are put into the body of Christ. And then through the Spirit, you become submissive. That Christ can do the work that it needs to do through that person that has the Spirit of Christ in him. Now, let me say this. You can have the Spirit of Christ in you, but without proper teaching and proper understanding, you can be still a very carnal and fleshly believer. And at the judgment seat of Christ, I'm afraid all of that will come full because the uh, uh, every believer will have to go before the fire and the fire shall try it, try your works and see what sort they are. Now also the purpose that was the process by which Christ wants to work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. I'm on the foundation and I love Jesus. I have reverence for him. Whatever Jesus wants, I want it. Why do I want it? Because he loves me. If he didn't love me, I would do what I want to do. And if you don't, if you don't love him, you're going to do what you want to do, regardless. He loves me, and in return I love him. So through my study, through my prayers, through reading scriptures, and faith come by here, and hearing by the word of God, you become so attached to him that you want to do whatever it is that he wants you to do because you know that he loves you. Well, he made that statement in the book of 
of uh, John's gospel. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So the promise is there, friend. Once you receive Christ as your personal Savior, then he places you on the firm foundation. And from the firm foundation, there is a multitude of, 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 of errors where the flesh needs to be crucified so you can put Christ on display. I hope that makes some sense. Now, in the book of um, Romans chapter 6, we're going to read the, these verses. To help you, we'll go through, read them again briefly. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in, in, in continue saying that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live in a longer day? Know ye not that as many are baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we're buried with him by him in baptism as Christ was raised from the dead by the grace of, by raised from the dead by the glory of God even we also shall walk in the newness of life and that's the new life that we walk in the spirit I think Paul mentioned that in the book of Galatians walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh but to walk in the spirit my friend we need to be submissive so the baptizing and the baptism into Christ, how we can walk in the newness of life. Now when you baptize into Jesus, Jesus gives you power over the flesh because of his presence in you as the spirit. So we have to submit to him to get that work done and put it on display from the body, from the foundation that Christ has laid uh, uh, back at over 2,000 years ago. Now, another one we want to look at is the book of uh, Galatians. No, I'm, I'm sorry. We'll go to the purpose of the, uh, <clears throat> the submission. God made uh, creatures, and those creatures that he made, he made them for a purpose. If you remember, um, if a, any person does something, create something apparently most of the time it's created for a reason there's a purpose behind it all and this purpose is that we put Christ on display but we can't put Christ on display if the flesh is still wants to have its way submission submission I'll, I'll repeat that submission because my friend when we go to Galatians why submit to your own husband as unto the Lord and then he asked the husband love the wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it you, you, you have to be prepared for that and what God is doing now I think through this this preaching this preaching is prepare you for that because you step into an arena where the flesh is, is running wild out here as far as a submission. Now, let, let, me, let me make this clear. The reason for submission is found in one little passage of scripture. Of course, there are others. I, I, don't have all, I don't have all with me, but we can go to them. But we have one passage of scripture that explains very uh, clearly the reason for submission. Romans 8 28 Romans 8 28 uh, you go to the book of Romans and you put into this wonderful passage of scripture where Paul says and you know that all things work together that's a lot of submission going on in this all things for good a lot of submission going to these things for good for them that what love it, it, it said nothing about you going to church nothing about you listening to a preacher nothing about your tithes he said nothing about that he said all things work together for good
for them. What, what them is that? Those that belong to Christ. Those that know he loves them. Those that know he died for their sins and, on, 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 and was buried on the third day, God raised them from the dead. Those that know that Christ went into the tomb, stayed there three nights and three days, and then God raised them from the dead. Those love Christ for, the, for, his, for his saving them from their sins and washed them clean in his own blood. That's, that's, that's the crowd that loves Jesus. And it was that those here in Rome and those in Galatia, those in Ephesus, those in Philippi, those in Ephesus, to know that God loves you, loves you. But you have to, in order for you to express that love, there has to be submission. A lot of submission right here. In this one little passage, submission just everywhere. And know that I and we know that all things, Romans 8, 28, work together for them, for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God called you for a purpose, for shaping, for molding. Verse 29, we'll throw it in, but verse 29 is a good one to look at also. For, for whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his dear son that we might be the first fruit among all, but among the brethren. Now listen to this. Again, if you don't love Jesus, there's no shaping going on in your life. You, know, you can't shape yourself into Christ. You have to submit to Christ that Christ can do that. You can't shape your neighbor into Christ. I don't care how much scripture, how much prayer goes on. Oh, that's good. But the shaping has to be done through trials and tribulation. And in those trials and tribulations, there has to be a gross amount of, of submission. You won't get it done unless you submit. Christ submitted to God. We spoke of that a little bit on last week where Pete, well, uh, Christ was in the garden and he said let, let let this cup pass from me Father please I, I, I don't want to face this nevertheless not my will but thy will be done I think it's verse Luke chapter 22 verse 24 and, all, and, and the fact that his flesh did not see in his suffering and that Jesus wasn't tempted to do things but he didn't I think in the book of Hebrews it said he was tempted always like we are yet without sin so you can be tempted my brother but don't sin when you begin to temptation comes it comes from, from your mind come from your eyes it comes from your all those avenues where you have uh, uh, those senses your feeling uh, your smell your touch, your eyes, your hearing, all of those are areas where uh, Satan tempts you. But that doesn't mean you have to fall for it. And the reason, you, the reason that many of you have risen above that is because you have trusted in Christ to enable you to rise above the temptation of the world. I thought that was great what Paul mentioned to the Romans here. Uh, you shape it. God shaped you for His own His own purpose, and He's gonna put you on display somewhere in it, in eternity or future. You will put on display. You'll be a masterpiece. So look, what my son died and purchased there on Earth. That 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 cesspool down there. He pulled him out, cleaned him up, and now we on 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 this. Now they're on display. Glory to God, friend. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Another one. Submission, friend. It's, it's critical. It's critical. That's why I'm, I'm Lord has been keeping me away from that passage of scriptures in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Ephesians. I'll say it again. Why? Submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. And husband, love your wife. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. 
Those two passages of scriptures are crucial in submitting, my friend. And you can't submit in the in the natural state. It has to be of the spirit. And we we promise you we're going to go there, but we want to lay this foundation. We're we're going to see we're building on this foundation. Me and my wife we crawl up on it, and we've been there for fifty three years. Sometimes God was in it, we didn't know it, and sometimes God was in it, and we knew it. God is always building, always structuring, working out things according to His own purpose. And another one we thought we'd look at is the book of uh, Ephesians. We're just going to go and look at the look at that uh, look at chapter two, chapter five. Verse 21. We're not going to speak on it, but we're going to lay it there that you can do your own study on that. That was a reason for submitting. If you don't love Jesus, uh, I can say with all my heart, you're not submitting at all. Because submission has to be because you love it. Anytime you submit to a person, in the spiritual sense I'm not talking about just somebody to stand on you and bossing you around <clears throat> that also had to be something that you uh, consider also because he did Paul did warn the Romans uh, to be submissive to those in authority over you be subject to those who rule over you Titus chapter 3 also be subject and submit to those who rule over you. Also, I think First Peter also speaks about submission to authorities over you. That's a fleshly submission. And that's a spiritual submission. And that's what we want to look at next week. But we want to close out with this, this little gem here in the book of uh, Ephesians. Uh, chapter 5 verse 21 and I want you to to think about this husband wife children I want you to think about this very careful because Paul did make an, 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 an all-inclusive statement here. Submitting yourself one to another in fear of God. The word fear has to do with reverence. Who, not, this, who, not, not that. The fear of reverence, respect, and adoration. So with that in mind, when it comes time for me to, to be submissive, I can be submissive in the flesh because I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to jail, and I can, I can be submissive in the spirit to please Christ. Remember that. Look at the word submission and see what it, what it means. Do some search, some research on submit. And submitting. Choose you this day, is what uh, Joshua told the Israelites when he was getting to cross over of the Jordan. He said, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. And I think the Spirit is saying the same thing. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. The flesh or the or or, or God or Jesus. There's two ways we can serve. In the spirit and in the flesh. But in order to, to break loose from the, from the flesh, there has to be submission on your part. And you submit to Lord Jesus Christ. As he told the praying that night in the, go with me to the book of Luke right quick. Luke 
chapter 24. Then, we, then we're going to close up. Chapter 22, 24, 24, I believe it is. 22, 24. No. Chapter 22, verse 42. Chapter 22, verse 42. Listen to these words that Christ uttered to his father. He loved his father, and the father loved him. But he had a mission to redeem you and redeem me. To save you and I both from hell. Hell doesn't talk about much nowadays. People say, I'm going through hell now. No, you ain't seen hell yet. Look here. Verse chapter 22, verse 42, saying, Father, if it be thy willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Many times, trials and tribulations come to our flesh. Bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, kindness, all that plays a major role in you submitting on the foundation to the one who has laid it. Take care, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you real good. Before we go, I'll remind you again, if you have never received Christ as your Savior, you need to receive him now as your Savior. Don't go to these places in vain, my friend, because when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, there you hear voices. I, I, I never knew you. I went to Bible study. But I never knew you. I sang in the choir. I never knew you. I, I taught Sunday school. I never knew you. Same thing as told Nicodemus. I see you, Nicodemus, but I don't know you. I know what you you about. But in order to be, you got to be born again before you can see me. Take care, my brothers and sisters. I pray that those scriptures and that message in some way inspire you to be more submissive. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Bless all the sick and shut-ins, all those that are going through trials and tribulation, even those that are struggling with making a decision now to follow you, Jesus. Work with them. Speak to their minds and speak and save them and board them into your body that you may have a church that you can put on display. Pray that I submit more. Every believer submit more. Every pastor submit more to you. We thank you again for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care.